Hey guys, so I'm over my cold and I'm feeling pretty good just a few days away from my surgery but I figured that I would come on while I have the time in between the chaos of preparing for all that and do a tag video. So I thought at first that the videos that I maybe wanted to get out there would potentially be some of my own making, some thoughts that have been brewing in my head, some topics that I wanted to discuss specifically. But I have to be honest, I kind of just really want to make an easy video right now. And so I thought what better way to do that than to do a VR to Kelly Bear, who is of the tarot community. And she has done this tag a few times. Um, I think since like, if I'm not mistaken, I think 2016. So this is my first time doing it. But it is the five decks I can't live without. And for me, honestly, this was a bit easy. I think just because I looked at it under the um, the lens of five decks that I'm kind of just really loving right now, that I'm really connected to, that I'm so excited to pull out when I work with them, and that just do something for me on a very deep level. So with that being said, I'm just going to get into the decks and we'll talk about them, talk about why I picked them and why they're awesome. So the first is the Star Tarot. And this is by Kathy McClellan. This deck I wanted for several months. And first of all, I'm going to talk about the, the guidebook. The guidebook is thick. It's rich. It's got a lot going on. Um, the One of my absolute favorite parts about this is she kind of has a list of uh, correspondence for each card. And then at the end of each card description she goes into she really breaks down the symbolism and the imagery and why she chose it and i love it when artists do that for decks because i really want to know why they chose that to represent um each card sorry i'm adjusting um <clears throat> so you won't be disappointed with the guidebook for this deck this is a deck that i did mod um get it out the box is like huge <laughs> um because it's it's one of those uh red feather box boxes that are just like massive but um so excuse me while I finagle here but so the cards are actually really big they have a huge border around them and I trimmed them down um and I trimmed off the titles and I actually went through with silver sharpie and and put the titles back on but this deck is like some cards like this actually remind me of my childhood a little bit just being a kid of like the late 80s early 90s um and then there are other cards that we got so much gloss going on here that i find just really powerful uh for instance death like you have this figure kind of going looping over death and then you also have the rebirth symbolism here with the phoenix the court cards are stunning hello crew <laughs> um some of the imagery in this deck is a some of it kind of does make me raise an eyebrow but if you read the guidebook there she has a very um you know i'm gonna turn off this monitor because it's driving me nuts with the glare okay there we go um she really does explain why she chose what she did oh that's happening <laughs> um but yeah i i really love this deck i can't get enough of it um and it is, it is very writer weight, and you definitely can read intuitively with it. I have, I have definitely given that a good go. But yeah, I, I love all things. Oh, <laughs> there's 15 pounds of cat like just plop down on my abdomen. That'll be fun in a few days. <laughs> um. Yeah, this deck is I mean and as soon as you if you do trim it it's really it's actually a pretty it's a little smaller than a standard tarot size 
but I highly recommend the Star Tarot. It's very rich in symbolism and it's very, it has those cosmic touches, but it also has those naturey touches. And there's parts of it that are very spiritual. There's parts of it that are very earthy. Um, and there's parts of it that kind of a little bit look like a, like, or a little bit reminiscent of a Thoth deck. But I don't really know Thoth very well. I don't read Thoth. Um, I'm very much a Rider Waite Smith tarot reader. There you can see like the touches of uh, nature in there. My webcam is actually focusing this time, guys. So yeah, that's the Star Tarot by Kathy McClellan. And I worked with this deck for a good month. I read through the guidebook. I just, I can't, I love, oh, that almost jumped off my desk. I love everything about decks that are very rich in symbolism. Um, and this one was so where it wasn't really intimidating. I think um, there are a few decks that I, I'm kind of interested in that are a little bit more intimidating, like Spirit Keeper by Benable Wen. It's I'm so intimidated by that deck, but I'm kind of intrigued. It's it's a weird, weird connection. Um, <clears throat> anyway, on to the next deck. <laughs> this is the Anima Mundi Tarot, and this is by um, Megan Weirden, I believe is how you say her last name. She is another... Pacific Northwesterner, much like myself, and that was actually one of the reasons why I got this deck, is because it's com it's comforting to me. Like, I look at this deck and I feel at home. Um, it's, it's an animal and plant deck, and there are, um, I believe the term for this type of deck when there's no figures is pip. But, um, I love this one. This one's so beautiful. So is this one. And, I don't know, I look at this and I see... I see everything that reminds me of why I am a pagan. Why I am part of a nature-based, earth-based path. And I love it. Um, I'm trying to find other cards. These are the backs and it's got gold gilding. It's that like you can probably see it, that like linen-y kind of card stock. But I really I really love the um, kind of the overtone of grays that she tends to use in her artwork by <laughs> Um there are some cards in this deck that I look at and I'm like, that's Washington. <laughs> um, specifically the Emperor, if I can find the Emperor. I love Three of Pentacles with the, the busy bees. Um, here's a good one. This isn't the Emperor, but uh, the Page of Cups is very much Washington with the Otter. I mean, if you're from Washington State, you, you know. Um, another one... I just love it. <laughs> um, but not, you know, honestly, the other thing that intrigues me about this deck is not just that. Not just that it really makes me feel like home. There's the, the Emperor. Um, it's also just because it, I can really sink myself into these cards. Um, I look at them and I kind of just feel myself being pulled in. The other big, big one as to why I purchased this deck, and if I can find the card, we'll talk about it, but let's see here. Um, I cannot find it. It's going to be, like, in the back, I'm sure. Aha! Found it. <laughs> the King of Cups is an orca, and I absolutely love orcas. They are my favorite animal, so... <laughs> That was the other reason why I was like, I gotta get this deck. <laughs> but yes, um, I do plan on doing a full review of this deck at some point here. But I, <clears throat> if I do deck reviews on my channel, I like to work with the deck for at least a month. So I can really kind of give you guys um, a more in-depth review as much as I can on it. So that's something that I'm kind of slowly integrating into my channel. And I, I know that I showed that when I did the Illuminated Earth Oracle. On to the next one. 
This one is the Dark Goddess Tarot by Ellen Lor Ellen Lorenzi Prince. I cannot talk today. Ever. I was like, my kids are asleep, but mom brain still persists. This is one that I was really surprised by because when I first saw it, I was not really keen on the artwork. And then I st it started to really grow on me. Um, this deck is Rider Waite Smith based, but I feel like it's its whole, it's its whole own thing. And I have a video on how I'm using this deck to work with. Um, it's, uh, it's, I believe it's titled, um, Night Owl Ramble. It's one of my Night Owl Rambles that I'm talking about, um, Shadow Work. We are upside down here. <laughs> but, um, obviously each, each card is a goddess. And it's kind of cool because, uh, the artist does provide you with a, you can, per well, actually she doesn't provide it. You can purchase it for, I think, $8, um, a PDF that's like an extended guidebook because it does come with a little white book which is right here um, but in the extended guidebook she goes through the story of each of these goddesses and then goes into the divinatory um, meaning for them when they come up in your readings now what to just give you a quick description of how I'm using this deck, even though I have a different video on it, is every dark moon I'm pulling a card and I work with that goddess for shadow work. And I do a journal, I'm doing a journaling uh, process on it as well, where I kind of go deep into what that goddess might mean, um, what her energies might be providing, what the message that she has for me that I need to focus on. <laughs> There's my girl, Freya. <laughs> Um, so I absolutely love working with this deck for that reason, for that purpose, and it's been really rewarding and enriching. The one thing that I will say about this deck, um, is that it's out of print. <laughs> I actually got it and, um, like a few weeks later it was out of print. So, uh, I hope that they, that she does another printing run of this because it is a wonderful deck. But, um, you know, we'll see. So I'm sorry if I just tempted any of you and then said it's out of print, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is the only one I'm going to show you that's out of print, I promise. Unless something's changed since I last checked the last two decks here. Okay. Um, so the last two decks here are very different from one another. This is the Marigold Tarot. Okay. Okay, this one, the guidebook is provided in a PDF when you purchase the book, uh, the deck. That, I mixed up that one and the, um, Dark Goddess. But yeah, some backs. Um, again, it's much like the Anima Mundi where it's got that, like, linen-y cardstock that's really flexible. I'm teaching myself how to riffle shuffle right now, and I really want to riffle shuffle these cards, and my brain's like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but, um... I was looking for a deck that had this sort of approach to it in the sense of it was embracing more of a shadowy imagery, but not so much that I would, like, a perfect example is the Deviant Moon. I'm really off put by that imagery and not in the sense of um, I'm off put, but I could learn something from it. It's more of like, I'm just really freaking uncomfortable. <laughs> and the reason why the Deviant Moon makes me uncomfortable is like, is that most of the figures, um, they tend to kind of look like clowns and I don't like clowns. They kind of scare me. Um, but for some strange reason, I guess skeletons don't, I don't know. But either way, um, <clears throat> I, I thought I would use this deck for either shadow work or, um, communing with ancestors and those who have passed and I have used it for daily draws as well but this is a deck that I just treasure because it really reaches into the more shadowy aspects of me and it's not like parts of it are loving but parts but a lot of it 
isn't. And most of the imagery is... Um, <clears throat> some of them are very straightforward. For instance, you know, Seven of Swords. And then um, others, you, you can kind of really let your eyes wander on the card and pick up details, pick up the figure, pick up how they're um, how they're holding themselves, what's happening in the card. And it's interesting because you look at these and they are skeletons. There isn't really a distinct gender unless you wanted to try and understand it from clothing, but we all know that doesn't say much either. So it, it kind of takes a, it takes away um, a veil in a sense when it comes to how to, I'm not entirely sure what I'm trying to say, but it, 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 I think it's, um, I think it's very, it helps me reach deeper without having that, um, that blockage there. Not necessarily just with gender, but my mind tends to wander a little bit more when I'm looking at these figures and I'm trying to figure out what's going on when reading intuitively and I'm not just being thrown into, um, the basis of like male or female, I guess is the best way to put it. I know that was really long-winded, but either way. Um, <clears throat> but this deck is, I find it a very deep deck. Um, I find it a very enticing deck and I just love it. <laughs> um, I'm very picky about like my darker decks, but I, I've been trying to like, I've been trying to explore darker decks and find what, what I enjoy. Um, I also have the Santa Morte Tarot, which I love. It's an amazing deck. Um, so yeah, that is the Marigold Tarot. The last one, like I said, is a very opposite of the previous deck that I just show, had shown, the previous two actually, and that is the Moonchild Tarot. This deck is a very gentle deck. Um, but it is also a very deep, enriching deck, and it's just, it's just caked with magic. It really is. Everything about this deck is just beautiful and soft and just absolutely wonderful. Um, this is a deck I reach for when I'm abs I'm feeling like crap, like I need, I need something to tell me what I need to hear but not kick me in the gut, you know, while I'm learning my lesson. And the, the Moonchild Tarot, I believe, does that for me. It really does. And I sink myself into this type of imagery, this galactic, otherworldly, sort of intuitive, deep, uh, the, the High Priestess. Like, I love this card so much. Um, if you read the guidebook, which I did, um, the guidebook is incredible. It's um, she really goes into her own imagery of the cards. Once again, much like Kathy McClellan in the Star Tarot, she, she, she kind of goes into why she chose each one and, um, kind of what's going on in the image and what she saw, what her vision was for the tarot. And a lot of this is like gateways to other planes of existence and, um, you know, um, for instance, the magician, for example, I don't know if I can pull him up, but the most interesting thing I read about the magician when I was looking through this deck and studying this deck is, there he is, <laughs> um, he sits at the, the gate of the astral realm, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I really was just, like, taken back by that. I thought it was incredible. And I know I mentioned it to a few of my friends, um, <clears throat> so they'll probably hear me repeat myself when they watch this video, but she does have a few extra cards in here, and I love that. Um, this one is Divine Wisdom, and then there's Moonchild and um, Shadow Work. I love the fact that there's a Shadow Work card in here, because this deck, as I said, it's a very gentle deck, but it also, it helps you kind of reach inward. And I think that was really her point behind it, is it was very much a introspective deck. And I love it. I love everything about it. I, I also have the Star Child Tarot, and they are similar, but they feel different. Um, very much sister decks, but not twins, you know. 
Um, but yeah, so this is the Moon Child, and I know I've talked about this deck several times on my channel, but I absolutely adore it. Um, <clears throat> so that is the top five decks I can't live without. <laughs> um, I just want to thank Kelly Bear for doing this tag. I don't, I, I'm kind of a, a lurker on her channel. I don't really comment very much, if at all, actually, but I watch her videos all the time. So if she does catch this, I watch her videos. <laughs> um, so I think that about wraps up this video. I don't know when I will be able to make any more within the next few weeks here because I have surgery coming up in just a few days. So I'm going to be recovering for a bit. And I hope that before the month is up, I can get a few more out as soon as I start to feel better. But I wanted to at least give you guys this one and kind of just do this fun little tag and kind of do a very light video <laughs> for you all. But with that being said, I am going to wrap this up now and bless it be.